Okay, I just want to take a few minutes to go through how to do the um, Nearpod for lab safety. Uh, again, for in here, I'm not sure why that's giving the lessons names, but I would put my full name. So Scott Rainey. And then I would join the lesson. And it's make, important that you make sure you're not just skipping through the slides, that you're doing any activity on the slides. And if you're having a problem with the activity on the slides, please let me know. So the first one was a fill in the blank. Listen to or read instructions. So we're going to drag that there carefully before we attempt to do anything. Uh, we're going to wear safety goggles to protect our eyes. And we do that anytime we have chemicals. He would share the things you might be shattered. Uh, and as always, we notify our teacher if any spills or accidents occur. Click done, and you can see what your score is. You don't have to close it. You can if you want. Let's just go to the next slide. Uh, after hanging chemicals, always wash your, you're going to wash your hands with soap and water. Uh, during lab work, keep your, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I take that back. You keep your hands away from your face, so you don't get chemicals on your hands or your face, and you're gonna tie back long hair. That's when we're gonna wear burners. I apologize, it slipped there for a second. All right, and again, we always click done, see what our score is. That's great. Uh, if we uh, have long sleeves, we need to roll those up. Uh, we should know the location of the fire extinguisher, the fire blanket. Our eye wash station. We should know where our first aid kit is. Uh, we should keep our work area uncluttered. No, it's uncluttered. I'm pretty sure. There you go. And uh, take only our lab station what is necessary. Uh, again, never put anything in your mouth during a lab experiment. Clean up your lab uh, area at the conclusion of a lab period. Never horse around or play practical jokes in the lab. Uh, if we have chipped or glass, cracked glassware, we should never use. We show it to the teacher so we can replace it. I'm sorry, I'm working a little bit off here. Thank you. When we are pouring liquids into glassware, we're going to make sure that the containers are uh, resting on the table and they're not anywhere, I'm pretty sure it's table, on the table and far away from the edge so it doesn't fall off and we have a break. Okay, nice work. Mr. Ray's doing awesome on the test so far. Uh, if there's glass where it gets broken, don't clean it up yourself. Just let me know. Uh, again, we never take hot glassware, place it in cold water because it may shatter. Uh, again, we're protective. We're going to wear goggles and a lab apron. Uh, whatever heating or pouring hazardous chemicals. We never mix chemicals together unless we are told to do so, and only in the way we're told, and we never taste anything in the lab. Again, three out of three. I am doing so well on this. Um, remember, we have to waft the fumes towards your nose with one hand. Don't put your nose over the container and inhale the fumes. If you want to understand what wafting is, this is wafting. See how he's bringing his hands to uh, the, the, the chemicals to him. He's not just putting his face over the, the container. Okay, follow the instructions of your teacher when disposing of any chemicals. You're going to wash your hands after we handle any chemicals. Uh, we're always going to make sure that we lay cords where no one can trip on them or get caught on them. Uh, we're going to make sure that our hands are dry whenever we're doing electrical equipment, and we're never going to poke anything into an electrical outlet. I'm just rocking this test. Uh, if we remember when we unplug cords, we pull by the plug, not the cord. We always unplug at the end of the last period unless you're told not to. Some classes will not have to do that. Uh, let burners and hot plates cool down before touching them. Test to see if they're cool enough by bringing them back to the back of your hand. Remember, we'll use tongs, protective gloves to handle hot objects, and we never reach across an open flame or burner. Uh, I'm not going to watch this video. You can watch this on yours, but it just talks about beaker safety. And, uh, and tong safety, but you've probably watched it if you did this Nearpod. Uh, make sure we're only using glass that's been approved by my te the teacher. We never point test tubes at, the, at our faces or anyone else's faces. And when we heat them, we always move it around in the flame to distribute the uh, heat evenly. Uh, we're always going to use glass where it's dry, and we're going to uh, heat things at a ring stand. We'll uh, use a gauze platform, so we never hold things in our hand when we are heating them. 
If we're lighting a burner, make sure we have our equipment ready to go before we strike the burner. Uh, the, we can adjust the air, regulate the uh, size of the flame, color of the flame. We never leave a burner unattended. This just gives you general techniques on how we handle different burns. So if it's a minor burn, again, we run under cold water. But the more severe burns, we would uh, get the nurse's help involved. Uh, when we're cuts and bruises, we uh, try to make sure our hands are clean. We press on them to stop bleeding. If it's more severe than that, we uh, will have to go to the nurse. But you always notify Mr. Rainey if you have a cut or a bruise. If someone faints, you just give a, uh, give them space. We put their feet above their head so the blood can rush to their head and give them, uh, and give them space. It's never occurred, so it's not an issue. Uh, remember, we're gonna. This is the eye wash station. We're gonna. If you ever get anything in your eyes, like chemicals or an object, we're gonna flush those out. We are not gonna just rub our eyes. And if you're poisoned, we'll find out what you're poisoned with and find out how to counteract it. If you have a spill on the skin, flush it with large quantities of water. If it's an acid, we'll use a base. If it's a base, we'll use an acid because they neutralize each other. We'll learn about that later. If it's a shock, remember we shut off the current at the source. We don't grab on somebody. We remove the wire with rubber gloves. We always let the teacher know. Okay, our matching. So we had to match the materials the way it should be. This is the chemical shower eye wash. Uh, this object is the first aid kit. These are beaker tongs. If I scream, it's because my cat's about to attack me. Um, this is the glass cabinet. Uh, this is the gas line. This is the electrical plug. This object here, this box here, is the gas shutoff. Uh, the goggle case is the object here. Oh, that's not the right one. I'm sorry. This is a Bunsen burner, which we'll be using in class. And then this is the intercom. So you would make sure you click on all those. It'll tell you how well you did, and then you continue. Go on to the next slide, and we're at the last part, which is the quiz. Let's go ahead and take the quiz. Whenever you spill, accident, uh, break, or something gets hurt, what's the first thing you should do? You should always notify the teacher. Uh, approved eye protection devices such as goggles are worn in the laboratory. Uh, why do we wear them? To look cool and sciency, to improve our vision. Only if you don't have corrective glasses, otherwise you can just wear those. Anytime we use chemicals, heat, or glassware, and that is the correct answer. Now, if you're ever doing these and you want to hear the book, or the uh, Nearpod read this, you can always just click in this box. I'll just show you that real quick. Okay, so if you ever want to read to you, you can just do that. Uh, if we ever don't understand a part of the lab, we always ask the teacher before we proceed. If a piece of lab equipment is not working properly, we stop, turn it off, and guess who you're going to tell? The principal, the teacher, your lab partner, your best friend. You're going to notify your teacher. Uh, if a fire alarm erupts, it was probably Mr. Rainey, um, immediately notify the teacher. Run for the fire extinguisher, throw water on the fire, open the windows. You are always going to notify the teacher first. Don't try and put it out yourself. It shows you your score, shows you the reflection of your score. So if you missed one, you can show you what the correct answer would be. And then you are done. When you're at the screen, you do not have to uh, submit. It's already recorded your score, and I will see it in Nearpod. Hope that explains how to do a Nearpod, and especially this Nearpod. Um, again, make sure you always include your entire name on the name part. I need both first and last name. Hope this helps. Have a great day.